It's been five years since Game of Thrones controversial series finale aired but, despite the backlash to it, I've only grown to appreciate the Iron Throne more with time. Game of Thrones ending was always going to be difficult to pull off in a way that pleased everyone, but season 8 concluded in a way that, if you go by the online reaction, pleased no one instead. Or at least, almost no one. I enjoyed the Game of Thrones series finale at the time, certainly more than most appeared to. Maybe in part because I'm a fool, no arguments here, maybe in part because I likely wouldn't have the career I did then, and still do, without finding success covering the show years earlier, but mostly because, well, I think it's great, well-earned, narratively satisfying, and thematically rich. Five years on, after several rewatches and, importantly, being removed from the intense cultural conversation around it, the finale has only got better. The Game of Thrones backlash was understandable, but too extreme. There were problems, but the level of vitriol went too far. Shot of Daenerys from behind addressing her army in Game of Thrones series finale. One of the reasons it's important to revisit the ending is that May 2019 was a strange, even difficult, period to fully judge something in. Game of Thrones season 8 sparked a backlash, yes, but that backlash, in turn, colored viewings of season 8. The two were intertwined, as someone who covered the show a lot on both a website and podcast, one was rarely discussed without the other, such was the fervor around those episodes. Half a decade on, not much has really changed in terms of how the ending is broadly viewed, though the conversation has mostly cooled. Game of Thrones ending, and the season 8 episodes that preceded it and started the backlash, were not perfect. Far from it. My point here is absolutely not to argue there weren't flaws, there were plenty. The pacing was far too quick. The decision to have only six episodes was the wrong one, although I'd argue season 7 suffered even more from its truncated run, yet without the same controversy. Choices like Daenerys, Mad Queen, Turn and King Bran Stark were big swings that, by their nature, would have been divisive even if they had been given more time. Game of Thrones was the biggest show in the world. One all of us fans obsessed over. Every tiny detail was scrutinized. How will Game of Thrones end? Was, in many ways, the question, anecdotally, I wrote an article back in around 2015 about that, and it was one of the biggest on the site I used to work for, because people were so focused on what it was building to. Put simply, there was a huge level of hype, which meant a greater level of pressure, so of course there was an intense backlash when things went wrong. Nonetheless, the backlash was overblown. The discourse, especially the more personal criticism and abuse aimed at people involved in the show, veered into ugly territory, albeit from a vocal minority. Putting forth a positive opinion wasn't a conversation starter, long one of the joys of covering the show, but instead a prompt for insults, break out the violins, eh, because those driving the online conversation were so fired up and angry. And some of that ire was understandable, some of it was not, and it's important to take a step back and look at things again. 